Hello everybody, welcome to the Contest Run podcast. This should be episode 63 if I've done my numbers correctly, because I think I said the wrong number last week, so this is should be episode 63. Hello everybody, we're available on YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify and iTunes, make sure you're following and all that stuff. And as always, if you don't know already, this is a collab- collaborative effort, um, and it's myself and my co-host Dan of Frontline MCOC. You can find him at www.frontline.home.com. Blog, frontlinemcc.home.blog links always in the bio and as well on twitter under the handle of at frontline mcoc dan what a week we've we, we've just been talking about off, off stream the kind of like headaches that come with existing in life and working yeah just just a lot going on um uh, you know i as i've been telling people recently like uh 2021 in some ways is is harder than 2020 because you're just trying to restart life and, and yeah. see people and like make up for lost time and it, in your personal life and and at work and like everything seems to happen at once and there's a million people like pinging you about like stuff to do and uh it is just a lot it, it, the days are full yeah absolutely <laughs> the days are definitely full and there does not seem to be enough bandwidth to get everything uh done whether that's in game personal work uh you name it, it yeah. everything is just a lot and that's the thing we're like you know we're not just like saying like oh what was what was us but like you know we know that you like there's gonna be people out there there'll be people that have time for a lot of stuff and and then there's people that don't so if you are a fighter keep fighting hard and and hopefully there will be like a one or two months with the game and also in, in life where things kind of calm down or at least like try and put so think about in the future of some kind of holiday i'm i'm thinking towards the end of july is i think when i might have like a, a couple days break but that's that's the thing you've got to put those small little respites like you're working towards something you've got to do yeah. that haven't you yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, speaking of needing needing a rest, a, a real quick story. So this week, my my son restarted preschool for the first time in like fifteen months. So he's he's wow. five, and we need to get him geared up for for kindergarten in the spring. And you know, he wasn't so sure about going back the first day, but you know, he had a good <laughs> time and he remembered everyone, and and it, and it's fun. It's mostly playing. They're not working up too hard. Yeah. But like by by Thursday. He's like, wait, I got to go again. He's like, I'm <laughs> tired. Like, I, I need my rest. Um, he's, he, what did he say? He's like, I just want to be at peace. And I'm <laughs> like, I'm like, I want to be at peace too. Like, it's like, I appreciate that. But we're like, you have to go to school. It's the law. i like, we, we laid on a little thing. We're thick. We're like, parents have to go to, uh, to work and kids have to go to school. Yeah. It's, it's the law, bud. And he's like, well, I just want June to be over. And I'm like, well, you have to go to preschool in July, too. He's like, what? He's like, how long do I have to go to preschool? And I'm like, well, in August. And he's like, oh, okay. I was like, but then you go to kindergarten in September. And he's like, wait, what? And he's like, how long does that, how long does school last? And we're like, like 15 years. And he was just beside himself. Like reality was setting in. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, he was he was not taking it well. Oh god. <laughs> it was it was hilarious and adorable and a little bit heartbreaking. Yeah. Man, those those are those big wake up things. The, that was a big wake up. It's like, wait, I don't just get to watch people play Smash Brothers uh, on YouTube like all day every day anymore, yeah. like whatever I want. I'm like, no, no. No more, no more free days. No, it's, it's difficult so. to explain. You know, this is how you meet friends. This is how you get an education. This is how you're able to do this, and then you get an, uh, and you have to do the tricking thing. I, well, I assume you have to do the tricky thing to say like, look, it gets easier at this at this point. Or you know, it's cool. You get to work, and then the reality sets in when when they're older. Yeah, <laughs> you, you've got the stresses of things called mortgages, trying to make ends meet month in month out. The stress of having something, some a uh, being like you in our lives again, trying to explain yes. the situation on repeat. Oh, life's life's a funny right. Oh, life cycle, oh yeah, so. it's it, yeah. Especially when I started go go back to the office, he's like, "Why do you have to do this?" I was like do you like the house we live in and the stuff you have <laughs> and he's like i do i was like well that's where the stuff comes from yeah he's like oh okay i get it, <laughs> you know? I get it. <laughs> yeah i get it so yeah so life life is life is crazy uh you know pa- uh you know parenthood for me you're planning a wedding uh everyone's got uh got something for yeah, sure yeah absolutely um and and in mcoc 
uh, our something is the summer of pain. Yeah. The summer of pain has begun. Uh, dropped. Uh, I mean, we knew it was going to drop this month, but it, you know, I got pinged as soon as it dropped. They're like, Dan, where's the preview? I was like, they didn't tell us no. this was coming out, and they didn't tell us what the fights were going to be. Yeah, like there was no CCP exactly. uh, preview. We were as surprised as you guys were. Yeah, on this one, that that came like completely left field. Because yeah, same thing. Like people were saying, "Oh, um, do you know like what's going on with it?" And like I don't. I was like, I I assumed that it drop in after um, Grandmaster Gauntlet. But yeah, I was like, expe- yeah I was expecting it like a week later. Yeah, exactly. Because have of you, that, have you had yeah. any chance to do Grandmaster Gauntlet yet? Uh, I have not. I've been playing around uh, with my team a little bit, uh, but still kind of smarting from the uh, inability to pull Professor X. <laughs> yeah. So I I don't know if I'm going to be able to 100% explore this thing uh, before it's it's over now because of everything that's going on and, and weekend plans. Uh, it's not mm-hmm. lining up too well unless I just want to... Um, you know, really hit the uh, hit the old unit and revive stash before yeah. uh, July Fourth, which I'm not sure I wanted to, especially with with Summer of Pain and and that being a one time thing. And these Summer of Pain rewards are nuts. Yeah. So uh, I don't want to risk uh, an issue with Summer of Pain trying to c- you explore Grandmaster Gauntlet when it's gonna come back. Yeah. I'm I'm going to be 100 percenting it, but I'm going to be doing it over the weekend. I'm still like I wanted to do it when I I started doing it, and then if anybody doesn't know, if anyone wasn't following on Twitter, and I, I said like I will kind of like mention this more in the video, which will probably be like a rewards opening type video. I'm pissed about it because, and I was like I was a little bit of everything: frustrated, annoyed, uh, upset to a degree, but you know it's a mobile game, so I should you know there's there's other things to worry about in life. But I went right instead of up oh and i wanted how, to continue how, on. how deep were you when you did that i was only on the first the first lane which is the first path which is fine um, okay but i was kind of like annoyed by that because i wanted to commit fully to it and i only had yeah. the, the problem is i only had like you and like many other people i only had time at that point to invest in doing the to all of it so that's that's mm. the thing i attacked so i was like this this essentially fucked up my schedule and right because you didn't have the a dime in the day to restart exactly yeah yeah. complete it yeah it's so explore it so i got really kind of like down about that and i was really annoyed and i kind of wish that kaban would have um i don't know had something where you um you even had like are you sure you want to go to this or had something where you um uh what is it at the end of the uh, either at the end of the path maybe kind of gone to something else where it was like a i don't know so I, I don't know maybe kind of re- did it in a certain way that it was yes you can make that choice but if you made the wrong choice by mistake you could go back and I was thinking about contacting Kabam about saying oh hey on hang on I've put myself over I've made the mistake but then I started reading a few there's a few forum posts and there was a few reddit posts where people have done the same thing as I did and wanted to do the 100 percenting but ended up doing the completion and they were denied to be moved so I just thought um I'm not gonna like I I can't really be bothered with the, the to kind of like fight my corner. I think the longer time I'd be the more time I'd wait fighting the corner to say like okay could you put me back on where I was would just be like it's wasted time and right I can't waste yeah, any you, more time yeah. with it because it's my, kind of weird how they did it where it branched to yeah. the to the node instead of just having it go to the node and it'd be portal A portal B and and would you see that like. You'd see that you were going to Thanos, yeah, <laughs> and clicking the wrong one. So I, I'm curious to why they set it up that way when they have the tech to set it up the other way. Yeah, uh, and that's the thing, you know, you, you just kind of like learn from these little things. And I'll, I'll just remember next time, go up as opposed to going right. Um, and then I will, I think, over the weekend, find some time to 100. percent I mean, on the plus side, I will be taking some other champions in that I didn't take first off and uh, especially at like, reassessing like who i'm taking it for whatever reason yeah um but there you go that's just like it's it's always everything's always a learning curve uh with it um mm. so so annoyed i am like so annoyed by that but yeah i can i can totally understand that yeah um let's move on to talk about summer of pain then because the, yeah. the world side of things 
it wasn't very clear for for people in the Cavalier what the, the good news for Cavalier they were able to att- like attend and do it. Bad news for Cavaliers they are only able to do up to milestone six. I think it is. Yeah. Now the that my understanding of that it has to do with they won't be able to see some of the challenges that yeah. you can earn extra points on. Is that mm. is that how that's going to work? Yeah. Uh, where's, the, where's the thing by Kaban Mike? He says that starting week four, we'll be introducing special objectives that add an extra level of challenge to each of the quests. These objectives will only be available to summoners that have earned a title of Thronebaker. This means Cavalier summoners complete each of the quests earns the maximum number of points available to them. They'll be able to obtain Milestone 6. So that's still milestone six is a a six star nexus yeah. and twenty five percent of a T five CC uh, fragment uh, selector. Yeah. So uh, still some very nice rewards um, <laughs> if you're if you're cavalier, but you're definitely missing out on the chance to do some of that high end stuff. I mean, when you look at what's in like eleven and ten. As far as those, you know, the generic uh, 75 generic six star signature stones, and mm. the, the tier six basic, tier yeah. three alpha, a, a full tier five CC selector and the uh, the six star nexus. I mean, that that is those are some heavy duty rewards. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I definitely want to try to push myself and get up into you know 9 10 11 if uh mm. if i can uh because those are those are some crazy uh rewards we're gonna have to see what these challenges are uh but i do like the format where it's like it's just one fight yeah like you don't feel bad practicing and backing yeah. out like i was i was working on it um uh, you know the last two nights uh trying to get a solo i i didn't get a solo no, uh I, I was using she hulk uh, I have a rank for She Hulk. I was, I was, uh, uh, you know, for uh, a minute, I was feeling like MSD yeah. when I was sort of in this in the cycle with the spacing and like heavy mm. countered her perfectly like three times in a row. I was like, does this how MSD feel every day of his life? <laughs> and then of course I'd get smacked and have to restart. Um, but yeah, She Hulk ended up being the option uh, for me. Really interesting fight as far as like spacing and and, and the pattern recognition. I just liked it was something I could kind of like practice and experiment with yeah. without feeling bad about having to restart because I wasn't wasting energy, wasn't popping refills, I wasn't popping, you know, potions or anything like that. It was really just like, okay, like let's let's get in there, do some practice. I didn't have to do any fights, warm up fights to get to the fight I need to practice. I just I love the format of just like straight to the boss and yeah. like let's see what you can do. Uh who did you use? Massacre. I really I tried was to, that... it wasn't too bad um with that I would have opted for another champion uh I don't know I think it was like it came, came like I don't know it was pretty stressed and kind of like quickly grabbing whatever I thought was felt was kind of like adequate I checked a few champions I tried I experimented with Black Widow Clairvoyant that was okay mm-hmm. my idea was to rotate around the um SP2 and deal with the Fury buffs if I was playing aggressively. But again, same issue with like the Unstoppable. It just becomes annoying if you're not timing it yep. right. Sorcerer Supreme, I tried out a little bit. And that kind of worked for a, for a bit. And I found that that was okay. But then I just settled on just going like, look, let's just choose Massacre and see about like hitting mm-hmm. into the block narrative. Uh, which oh, did... yeah. The Invade node, yeah. Yeah, which... yeah with his block penetration. Sort of worked well, sort of didn't. I used the rank two six star for that one. Um, yeah, it was it was all right. I, gotcha. Just a case of like, I wish I had Dragon Man. I wish I had uh, more skill with Quake in order to use Quake. Um, yeah, but... I've seen people people ghost it. I've seen it, I've seen yeah. some Spider Gwen. Uh, I saw a really interesting Namor video. Yeah. Where uh, did you see the Namor thing where where he can reflect? Uh, like if you if you're both attacking uh, when uh, you're unstoppable, it just becomes like you know Namor hits She Hulk, She Hulk hits Namor, Namor hits She Hulk, and if you time it right, it all gets reflected back to She Hulk. Yeah, yeah, uh, I, th- I think that's. A- I tried that a little bit, and it was like, yeah, it's uh, a dangerous game. <laughs> yeah, it is because like anything can really happen uh, with yeah. it. Yeah, uh, yeah. 
You yeah, I, I tried a bunch of champs. It's like I started with She-Hulk, tried a bunch of stuff, came back to She-Hulk. Uh, and she just works really well, and I, I felt like had the biggest uh, sort of safety net with that two-hit mm. heavy. So like even if you weren't spacing it perfectly and you whiff to the first hit, you could still... Um, get uh, you know, get rid of the um, unblockable with the uh, with the second hit, and uh, that seemed to uh, work for me as long as you know I was dexing properly. Cause she she was aggressive, just sort of running in, and if she tags you, it's all over. <laughs> yeah, that's the other so, problem with it, isn't it? Yeah, like it's there. There is very little room for error, even if it's a, a blocked hit. You might get a couple of those in. Yeah. Uh, but you know, all in all, like I thought a good first fight. Uh, you know, a skilled fight, a fight that clearly can be soloed with multiple champs if you're good enough. And, and that's uh, the kind of content we generally ask for. Although it is, you know, it's hard. Like if you're not prepared, like she's definitely going to, you know, end the fight very quickly. Yeah. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see what's coming next because this was a uh sort of a a uh, juiced up version of uh, a dragon uh, dragon phase uh, a rogue boss fight from a few years ago so, yeah, so will we be seeing more will we be seeing the return of your king groot or or dave's Iceman? who knows i don't think command would be that kind of like generous to the community to give a um what is it mystic i can't remember what i what i put on mine i think it was like it was like stagger or not stat stag it was like mystic effects have the x amount of chance to fail i made mine very very fair so yeah i don't i don't know whether or not that would be that would be a thing um it'll probably yep. be ones i reckon it legacy's symbiote supreme will make a return oh that would that fight was insane that that was yeah that was that was very very annoying um so yeah i reckon that's going to make a return i probably think we'll see if it's going to be like a very centric boss rush and what's the images like the i've got emma frost and venom i can't remember if anybody chose a venom fight and there's a mysterio there so maybe it will be kind of yeah. like maybe i might look back at some of the old boss rushes and see if there is any kind of like champions that could be the logical um yeah because katie candy put an emma in a boss rush at, at yes. one point yes, so it's did. pro that's probably well where that emma's coming from Mm. And Mysterio, who knows if that? I've heard a lot of people worried that it's like ac uh, acid wash Mysterio returning. <laughs> oh god! So that that you never know. They never. He got he got removed from Ag Six. Is is he gone to the Summer of Pain? Is that where he's hanging out now? Yeah, but that, you know? yeah. To kind of like definitely cause you <laughs> cause you pain. This is going to be hopefully yes. not a huge amount of spend of units and kind of resources for people if. They, you know, they don't because there's gonna there's skilled yeah. people in this game, and there's people that you know just to want to have a bit of fun and just chill with uh, with pl playing the game. So it's like there's got to be a happy narrative between both types of ventures. But my concern is like, what are these objectives going to be when it comes to further down? Yeah, are they going to be star restricted? Are they going to be specific champions? Like I I would I would think it it would look something like Karina's challenge with yeah. these, where it's like you have to do something very specific. Yeah. as far as your champion choice like that that seems like the most obvious thing that they could do is either restrict star level or or tell you you have to use a specific uh champion mm. uh, which is of course uh you know the specific champion thing gets a little dicey if you don't have that specific champion available within the seven day window <laughs> of <laughs> of the fight being available that's true that's true so uh, please don't have a guillotine uh, 2099 uh, objective because I'm going to be in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Because I can't pull her even as a four star, I think. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that that is the that would be my one concern there is if it's if it's very restricted um, as far as champions go mm -hmm. uh, that you just don't have the champion and then you miss out on the objective, which could really hurt. Uh, certainly in later weeks so we'll yeah, have to keep absolutely. an eye on that when that starts in week four you said yeah week four week four cool but yeah summer of pain finally here a summer later than we were uh, originally anticipating from the roadmap yeah. but nonetheless people uh seem to be uh seem to be excited and i would i would just remind people just because the youtubers beat it in the first half hour doesn't mean you can't 
uh, take four or five days and practice and, and reduce your unit and uh, and item spend. Yeah, absolutely. Take some yep. time, consider some options, yeah. and do it. And then if like if week one you're spending week two, uh, I suppose like week one spending units uh, or, or resources and stuff, then be optimistic and think right. Well, week two may be a a better boss that um, I can take down. And right. Because that's the thing. It's, it's still going to be an investment regardless of anything. If you're putting a few revives in each week, then it's nothing really to worry about because by the end of it, there may be, you may be looking, you may be sitting on a full six star for your trouble, a, a six star plus some resources in order to take champions further. So, you know, positive and moving forward. All right. We yeah, better, absolutely. We better move on and talk about arena changes because Kabam listened they dealt with it. Uh, a few grumblings here and there that, that are still like not in a position that they'd like. i got to be honest, I, I do like what they've done with some of the trials. I personally feel that they could have redu reduced down the uh, 4.5 mil mar final milestone a little bit because it's just, again, it's like your time slump into it is going to be quite critical. But what you get back from it is actually pretty good. Yeah, I mean, I'm enjoying uh, the the four star arena and yeah. the increased amount of units there. Uh, that's my favorite uh, arena to do because it is the most mindless. Yeah, and uh, you know, a lot of times when I'm doing arena, it's just because I want to veg and I'm stressed, and uh, you know, it's it's just kind of something to keep my brain uh, occupied. So if I can pick up some extra units uh, every few rounds. Uh, with you know my max four stars, so they actually have something to do. Yeah, uh, I'm feeling pretty good about that. Um, now I, I think most of the uh, angst about the change was in the basic arena for people who didn't realize six stars would be um, uh, getting the same points as five stars. I don't yeah. know about you, but I got pinged maybe a half a dozen times. We on, talked about uh, this, Monday or Tuesday on Discord. Yeah. We talked about this because like, I was. Um, I not I didn't want to like, be rude to any, anybody and kind of like ignore, but it's like make sure to check your mail. Like Kabam, do I'm pretty certain they mailed about the um, uh, what was going on with the arena. Did they? They did. Yeah, yeah they did. Okay, no, so they, so they I did. got going mad. Yeah, but it's I mean it's confusing because it was supposed to start a week ago and then it didn't and then it started in the middle of the cycle. Yeah. Instead of like when it, so I I get I get some of that. Um. You know, it, it really depends on where you're uh, coming from. If you've got a big six-star roster and you want to focus on the basic arena, you're feeling uh, mm -hmm. a little bit shafted by this because uh, that changes your plan. But yeah. if you're if you're someone that doesn't have a big six-star roster and you're just getting into this basic arena uh, with your five stars, you are not at the competitive disadvantage uh, you are in the featured arena. So. Uh, it's kind of one of those things where, uh, you know, some people get helped and some people get hurt by, uh, the change. There's no, there's no way around that. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, yeah, I, I, I think then I wonder whether Kaban will make any further changes to the arena. Um, I, I personally don't think they will. I don't think so either. This is, and this is the, this is the thing that I, I'm, I'm sure that these changes will, not feel that they're effective for um i want to say a smaller amount in the community than a larger portion of the community that's not kind of like saying like okay majority wins over minority right that's that's not fair to say but i think command will, will probably do they'll probably go with a greater number of what they see with the statistics and how many players may have grinded further for stuff and I, I'm, i've talked to a few uh more uh, prolific ar uh, arena grinders and they predominantly feel that their fine and their old methods of grind are able to be replicated from a time investment perspective from how they build their build their champions up and rotate them around the time frames and get the units that they had previously uh, I've, I've still got to do my video to update of like okay well time investment to what i got back out of it uh, yeah. but so far seems good i actually think that i'm in profit more with the unit with the amount of time i invest into it to what i get back units wise and that's again like either using my three star boost which you can get from various different areas the solo uh, greater uh, solo and greater 
crystals. Yeah. Everyone so, should have tons of those. Absolutely. If you are if you are a, a grinder of the game, you should be picking up that, and you should be then when you pop them open, you should be seeing some arena crystals, which oh no, boosts. Sorry, boosts. I should say uh, that then again help you towards your grind. Like I'll just I don't know. Let's just see. I'll just pop ten right here and see what I get back from them. And now I'm doing the greater ones, and I've got um, one, two, three, four. Yeah, four four boosts there. Um, for five star, if I do lower ones, and I'll get you know three star ones, four star ones, and I'll just take that and reinvest it back in as as I go. But it's up to you how you reinvest stuff in order to get further with uh, with your grind. But I think that's probably some of the, be the the best things to do if you want to get to milestones quicker. Is look where you can get boosts and then reinvest them into your grind. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, you know, there's there's uh, uh, events where you need to be spending items anyway. So yeah. sometimes it lines up really well for you. Absolutely. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I I, I I like it, but I know there are going to be people out there that don't like it. But, yeah, like also compensation, that's something that, that was discussed. Uh, so this, go, this video, this stream, this stream, this podcast goes out on Sunday. So this was... Somebody at Kabam said that uh, it will be next week, so week 21st to the 25th, you'll likely see compensation. They're analyzing data from what from what I've um, read in my discussion with, with Kabam, that it was like data from old and new. So I don't know if they're referring back to the old scheme, to the new scheme, or how it... So I, I don't know. I don't know. I just know that that's going to be... If you want compensation, it's next week um, for that. Right, uh, six star on Supple Colossus. Massive surprise. Didn't expect that. Another surprise. I mean, this is one of those things that has been rumored for years, and then it just pops up out of the blue. Yeah. Uh, in, the, in the store. <laughs> will you be getting him? I will likely be getting him on my second account. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I'll ever be able to afford him on my main account as long as I'm doing competitive uh, Alliance quest, which yeah. requires a queue tickets. Um, my my loyalty spend goes there, but I'm closing in on a million loyalty mm -hmm. uh, on in my second account. So I do think um, I will, uh, you know, spend the 1.6 million loyalty on a six star unstoppable Colossus and have him on my uh, I'm on my free to play account, and that'll be like the one thing that my free to play account will always have over my main. Yeah. I think one one I don't know if one point six mil is a bit too expensive, and will that drop in time? I suspect it probably will drop in time, but I don't think it's going to happen overnight. I mean, look at the the, the yeah, state of like the five star loyalty is one of those resources where they've done very little to expand the uh, availability of it over the years. Mm. Yeah, there's some there's always some nice boosts. There's you know, we've got level three, level 3 Alliance Team Revive uh, at the point of recording this video, which is Friday. So yeah. that's always something that um, is of more value to grab than some of the other stuff. There's some boosts that always pop into here, which I do pick up from time to time if, I, if I'm if in need for them. And especially the Alliance Wars stuff, which has um, very important boosts for a lot of players. So... And as, as well, Mastery Course, so Mastery. Those are the, kind of the critical things. So picking up a 6-star is a bit of a bit of a weird thing. I will yeah. be personally grabbing it, but um, I think it's just there to be as a sort of a trophy type thing to say, yay, I've got it. And like, I'll just, I don't know, have it as an extra champion to grind in uh, yeah. my I mean, uh, arena. It's just a fun extra thing at the, yeah. uh, at the end of the day. It's not It's not going to change anybody's uh, MCOC uh career Ooh, interesting okay i'm looking at my my free to play account which is in the middle of act four and i can get to five star but i don't have access to the six star yet so i'm wondering if you have to be cavalier yeah i wonder if you have to be cavalier or at least uncollected to get the did, did they say yeah it's confirmed cavalier it, oh it is cavalier yeah. okay all right well it's gonna be uh i might have the 1.6 loyalty before i have <laughs> this account at cavalier <laughs> We'll see. But someday, yeah. someday. Someday. Goals, Rich. That's, it's good to have goals yeah, and hopes and dreams. That is indeed the chase. The chase. <laughs> target the chase. Goal. The chase is on. Yeah. Are you ha yeah, you have the chase in the US, don't you? Uh, or do you call oh, it yeah. I, I think we do. I think you might name it something else, the game show. Yeah, that it's, sounds like something we do. 
Yeah, I don't. I don't know if it's like a U. It's a, it was a UK show that started out to be like a US show. It's like, hang on, what is the Chase USA? Oh, it is called the Chase. That makes sense. Um, yeah. Oh, it got the final episode was 2015. So you had it for two years, apparently. Yeah. Oh. I said. Th- guess it, I guess it didn't catch on as much here. I no, know. the same <laughs> thing as Tesco's and what else got discontinued in. Oh, uh, the in between is the office did well. So that's the, the office did very well. <laughs> the office is still like the most watched. It's like uh, the office and friends are still the most watched shows in America. Like everyone yeah. just been just um, so. Yeah, I think the office is bigger now than it, when it was actually like on TV <laughs> in mm. first run. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, was that a... I think it was like the 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 chase show was I don't know why why I'm diverting the conversation about the chase. <laughs> I mean, people in the UK will know the chase is like an ongoing series in the UK that's been on for ages, but it's just like UK exports that didn't do too well um, in the US. Any case, it's, you know, you guys have the Beatles. Like you, you won. <laughs> you had like the best uh, entertaining, uh, most entertaining export of all time. We had One Direction as well, Dan. I, I don't think we're kind of like on any kind of like great level. Uh, One Direction. <laughs> <laughs> Saying no, that. Wait, like... what was what was the uh, what was the one in the uh, in like the nineties that was like the um, Robbie Williams was in? Take, Take that. that. You had Take That. Oh god. That was like a one hit wonder that crossed over. Like that that sort of filled that need we had in the U.S. Like. The new kids on the block had had were done, but we didn't have the Backstreet Boys in NSYNC yet. We needed we needed our boy band fix and take that dropped in in like ninety four, ninety five. Uh, yeah, like, <laughs> and they drop back yeah. out. And, but the thing is, in the, UK, <laughs> in the UK, they're kind of like they've still got a career going. They're they they're, they're down to three now. Um, oh, they're down to three. Yeah, oh. from from the, <laughs> a lot has happened to take that over that's, the years. That's sad. Yeah, but um. Yeah, it's, it's still going, still going on. Uh, anyway, we, we should move on and talk about Loki. Loki, yes, back to Marvel. Loki, episode two, the variant. Uh, yeah. Lots of lots of witty banter, and um, you know, I think Lo- Loki starts uh, as always starts to look for exploits. Uh, starts to see uh, the cracks in the facade of the TVA, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, our 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 man Loki is willing to do the homework. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's what we learned in this episode. He is willing to do the homework, do the reading, and uh, and and find out uh, something he can exploit. Uh, so, like, obviously, uh, you know, we'll talk about the ending because you know the ending's the the big point, but. Um, like, what did you think about Loki's whole, like, apocalypse theory? And, like, he, you know, he's basically, like, a consultant in this episode to, like, find himself uh, or a variant of himself. What did, what did you think of his whole, like, apocalypse exploit? I think he's I think he's not only onto something, but also he's also figuring out an escape plan to this entire situ- situation that he's yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. I no. mean, it, it kind of makes sense that, like, uh, a guy who who loves chaos would hide in chaos. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like it's it's very. Uh, I mean, you know, Loki uh, visiting Pompeii and just kind of making <laughs> a mockery of the whole thing is like the most Loki thing ever. <laughs> You're all gonna die. Each well You're all now. gonna die. Isn't it a laugh? You know, like that's Loki. Like, you know, I think you know what what you're sort of getting from him in that is. Uh, him, I don't know if coming to terms with, but you know, he's basically been told like everything's written and nothing matters. Yeah. Um, and that is so, uh, so against I think his his natural beliefs mm-hmm. that he's he's really struggling with that. He's like going through the the phases of uh, reconciliation with that that information. Yeah, so, I, I, I just know. like the way it's like yes, it's good because he questions everything. He wants to know. A lot, but it, at the same time, it's like, does he wonder what? What does he want to know? Too much, and and, and like the way that he's like, um, oh, I want, you know, is this all about getting an audience with the timekeepers? Well, who created the timekeepers then? If the timekeepers are meant to like dictate the flow of time of what is what is sacred, how yeah, it, how's it been to their will, and and how's that seem seem kind of like um, totally 
fair. Uh, so there's 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 a, there's a lot to like unpacking this, which is I think is good. The creation of the show to like ask a lot of these questions about how and why the timekeepers exist why they have created the TVA for this type of thing as well. And I feel that we're on a, we're going to start on a journey as to why the, I mean, you can look in the comic books and stuff like as to why the TVA, why the timekeepers. But I think the good thing about the show is it follows somebody that like us, the audience predominantly in who's watched the MCU, we would go, what the hell are the timekeepers? What the hell is the TVA? So we're, it's right. great. So we're learning about that. We're also learning about Loki and also, the extent of like how these variants um, on this whole kind of branching off of time is gonna be is gonna be solved, or is it gonna be solved? Yeah, or is it gonna be so, or is it, or is it just creating more problems for Doctor Strange to deal with in his next movie? Yes, <laughs> you know we don't we don't know because this is like as much as we've talked about the multiverse and and teased it like this feels like the first time we're like really starting to get. Uh, characters from the multiverse. Mm. So it's it's been a long time uh, uh, coming. Uh, I you know we definitely got more of the the fun uh, Mobius Loki uh, banter. It it was interesting because one of the lines uh, that I, probably one of my favorite lines was the whole like uh, you know it's been in the trailer, but they they left something out of the trailer which made it even better. Was you know I'd never stab any one in the back. It's such a boring form of <laughs> betrayal. And then Moby's like, look, Loki, I've studied almost every moment of your life. You've literally stabbed people in the back like 50 times. And Loki's like, well, I'd never oh. do it again because I it got it old. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just like, I mean, Tom Hiddleston, you're you're a gem, man. Like, we, we just love you so much. <laughs> We're so glad you have a show. <laughs> but then, yeah, there's the other bit when he's like reading up about like Asgard and Ragnarok and like how many casualties. And he goes, oh, and something like, that's so, oh, that's so sad. And then moves yeah. on. Like, just turn the page. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sad. Move on. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah. And uh, but that's but, 2012. Uh, the thing is, this is still 2012 Loki, who's not had the kind of like ex the experience right. with his with his brother about like uh, get help or kind of like you know uh, yep. saving the day. Loki. This isn't a uh, remorseful Loki. This is still 2012. Um, uh, but all glorious purpose. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like, yeah so exactly. This is this is that's so clever. Why, why, why and how uh, Tom is is delivering this version because he, it's it's so strange, but it's so brilliant at the same time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he, you know, you're just talking about an actor that really understands his character and has a, a long history with it, and mm. uh, you know, he's just he's just a joy to watch. So. And, and like like we talked about in episode one, it's fun to, you know, a character that's so based on his wordplay, uh, you know, only gets so much time to shine in $300 million budget, explodey big action films, right? Yeah. <laughs> so the fact that, like, he can actually, like, sit at a table and have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with someone for five minutes, <laughs> you know, and, and kind of do the sparring thing with Mobius, like, that, that is cool because, we you know, you just don't get to to see that and uh, you know thor is not that kind of a foil for for loki mm. uh, as great as it is to see those guys on screen it's not you know it's not the same dynamic at all as what you know loki's trying to test mobius to see how much he really knows about about everything and is trying to find the the flaws and has that big correction about mm. like the different forms of magic like I just love that it like Loki's good. like so like he can show off his magic and the TV is just like what what is what is this what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, it's like um, uh, what was uh, they were trying to something about uh, not astral projection they took yeah it was like projection the, versus yeah. duplication or something yeah. like that which which seems like it 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 could be a hint um, for for later on in the series and and where they're going so. Mm. Uh, you know, the end of the episode, obviously, we get the big reveal about who could potentially be the uh, the big bad and uh, Lady Loki. Yeah. Um, um, and she, you know, she has some some nice tricks being able to uh, uh, take control of people at uh, the future Walmart. Mm -hmm. uh, but then uh, sort of the uh, the bomb gets dropped in uh, the, the credits. Did you did you see that? I'm gonna say that we didn't. You're gonna have to like let me okay. know. So I've got to tell. Okay. 
All right, so um, in in the credits, the uh, actress that uh, is playing who we think is Lady Loki, uh, Sophia DiMartino, her character was listed as Sylvie. And Sylvie is a version of the Enchantress created by Loki, created by a Lady Loki, actually. Oh, so this, right. this all goes back to um, like Ragnarok in the comics, and then Thor is able to uh, bring back the Asgardians. Loki gets brought back as a woman, and this this lady Loki then creates a version of the Enchantress. She finds a human and gives her the powers of the Enchantress just to mess around with her. <laughs> and that character's name is is uh, Sylvie Lushton. So wow. the speculation could be that this uh, this character um, is not, in fact, a a female version of Loki from the multiverse, but a a woman given the powers of the Enchantress by Loki. Uh, we will, of course, have to see. But um, that was a uh, that was a big surprise uh, for the uh, the comic nerds <laughs> in the uh, in the credits. Wow. So okay, we'll, that we'll see. They get layers, so Rich. They're they're throwing layers at us. But then that's going to be like interesting to think like at the end of like uh, what did, Tom Hiddleston said by episode four things start really kind of ramping up. It goes on like a crazy journey, and that's going to be the real thing with it. Like what, um, what kind of crazy journey this will be? Will this be a redemption arc for Loki actually um, being? Resetting the Asgards, or kind of like I don't know, um, making everyone live again, or will they kind of really do good by um, another multiversal timeline by saving that timeline over saving his own timeline? Yeah. God, that's interesting. Oh yeah, it's there's there's so much uh, going on, and uh, yeah, it's it's very uh, yeah. We certainly got a lot to deal with here uh the one you know they could be obviously they could be trying to throw us off they've, they've done that with a bunch of other shows <laughs> wandavision um <laughs> but like you know when when uh you know it's like you know sort of the you're me or, or or if anything you know you're me uh kind of stuff and then you know when our our loki our tom hiddleston loki calls her loki she doesn't like that so mm. That's the you know is she Loki or or isn't she we we don't know but uh it's gonna be it's it's gonna be a long wait till Wednesday to find out yeah for sure for sure I'm looking forward we are to that. we're enjoying uh we're enjoying the uh the ride so far and now uh you know at the end of the episode you know Loki is out in the wild again he's gone through the portal um he's you know he takes his his chance as always to uh make a run for it so. Yeah, I think we will. The, we'll see. This is the thing: is that Loki's either out for Loki, or he's out to uh, assist the TVA, but also be out for Loki at the same time, and like you know his own interests. Uh, and that's really the thing. I don't. I think by the end of it, there may be kind of like a double cross, a triple cross, a quadruple cross. Um, right. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have to see. Yeah, I mean that. That's the thing. Like the TVA could catch up with him next episode, and he could, you know, pull the. No, I was, you know, I was doing it all for you guys. I, you know, had the, I took advantage of the situation. This was my plan. I wanted you to think this yeah. so that I, you know, like I could play this trick on them, but I was really, you know, double, double crossing or like a triple agent or something like that. Like you just, he'll say anything. Yeah. <laughs> so you never quite know. <laughs> we all know he's out for himself. We, he is, oh, he's, yes. At the core, he, Loki is out for Loki. Yeah, for sure. Okay, we're going to talk a little bit about Realm and Future Revolution because um, well, we've always got always, always important to like discuss it. But um, yeah, I got to be honest, I've not played any Realm. Probably three, or four, three, four, maybe three or four weeks, maybe a month now. I have not have not played any Realm. Yeah, I uh, haven't had time to do that many games uh, in the uh, in the past week. I think it's more, and they, and they've been quiet. Like they're in the middle of an update cycle and mm. i think we're very quickly learning with uh, realm is like if they're releasing a new champion it's a big month and anything else feels pretty dry yeah like the new costumes i, I know this month's all about spider-man 2099 who would be an enormous deal if he came to mcoc i think yeah uh but just because of how hard it is to collect 
costumes and the RNG involved, it's, it doesn't feel like the same chase as trying to unlock a new character through, uh, you know, milestone achievement. Yeah. Um, so that's, you know, that's something to think about. Uh, for future evolution, they continue to ramp up their marketing. Is is this website update, is is this new as of this week? Yeah. There's like um, some of the promos and uh, the newsletter and all that. Yeah, you can also uh, see the, uh, like, a button, so the, the UI on um, on the screen. Mm-hmm. Which is which is which is really impressive. That's that's only available, I think, in the, the Canadian App Store. So you can pre pre register in the Canadian App Store. I don't know if you can do it elsewhere. I've tried to I tried to log into the Philippines one, um, but I think I might have to do that via the Canadian one. I think I might have to change or create an account um, in Canada and and try and try and make sure I'm pre registered and get the updates as soon as it's as soon as it's out because it's it, lo- it looks really good. It looks like you can yeah. switch from like a camera focus of having it very much kind of a first person to third person. Not hundred percent sure on that. It's just like there's a camera button towards the uh, the bottom. Uh, I did a video um, on it if anybody's interested on on YouTube to check it out. But it's yeah, it, it does look and, good. It looks really good. Yeah, it it does look good. And they you know they they are not being shy with the teases. They they just teased. Uh, Kingpin is a villain. Yeah. Ares this week. Another character I think we'd love to see in the. MCOC, MCOC yeah. Aries, especially with the Hercules coming soon. Uh, Yellow Jacket, Laufey, that's another, you know, they're they're uh, bringing out uh, some interesting uh, choices. And it seems mm-hmm. like they've got a good art team. This is the thing that excites me about this kind of like raiding option or like, you know, mm. you, it seems like you go to like dungeons and like this, I'm getting more hyped about it. The, the only thing that I, I kind of like say is like it just depends on like how the co-op mode is. And there was something that I, that really not irked me, but I thought like if this is going to be how I envision it, which is going to be a Marvel a Marvel game that's similar to World of Warcraft, but it's on mobile. If it's got all those elements where you know you you team up with you know or, or you queue up with like three to four people and you go into um, I don't know the uh, Frost Giant Dungeon or whatever it is, or the um, Jodenheim Dungeon or whatever, that you're able to kind of like go in settings like this and kind of explore, defeat mobs, and then go to like a big boss where you have to team up and take it down. And like, do you know what? I am all for that, and that is the game that I would just love to see, even more so on mobile. So, yeah, I I I don't know if that's going to be it, but I'd love it to be it. Yeah. Yeah, that I mean I, I think it's it's like all these these games is you can only predict so much from what we're shown in the teasers and until you really get to uh you know play with the combat system like that mm. that is the stress test. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> uh, whether or not it's going to be uh good or, or bad and uh you know I think much like we we learned with Realm like can you get uh off to a fast start? Can you get that critical mass of of users and and get people matched properly as mm. far as like teams go like you know if, if this is going to be a game that relies heavily on raids like how much control over do you ha- do you have over your teammates and yeah uh you know how can you get matched with people of, of like similar skill and rating and all that kind of stuff yeah absolutely and that's that's something that i need to uh, make sure is uh, in position I, I I literally this this is one of the games I really can't wait to see and I will be um I'm bu- I'm gonna buy an iPad Pro I'm gonna probably get something on a on a, like a two year yeah. release or something to uh, to kind of get that and then you know once I've done that it means that uh, you know at least kind of I can play it um in a larger larger screen because I just feel like a mobile device especially my i iPhone 11 Pro is like the screen is just so diddy and I, I have a problem playing MCC in any case on it I just don't think it's a very good device. Yeah, I mean, I find the same thing with with Realm. When I'm playing on Realm, I I always play on my iPad. Like mm-hmm. I just you need the you need the larger screen size. It's yeah. not it's not like MCOC where it's you know one one v one and you can see everything and it uh, you know th- that's the brilliance of uh, MCOC is it just it it is perfect on the phone in that regard. Even though it mm-hmm. looks better on the iPad, like sometimes I look at mcoc and the ipad i just look at the costumes look at like captain america infinity war there's just like so so many gradients and details <laughs> the costume and you're like wow i'm missing that on my phone like yeah. it doesn't impl- impact the gameplay but man does it look good <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, dear. Right, I think that's been a good show. Thank you, yes. um, everybody. Dan, is there anything you're trying to get up to or get done uh, next week? Uh, next week? Um, I don't know. Just, just kind of plugging along. Might get back into um, uh, Variant 6, uh, working on some more free-to-play Act 4 guides, mm-hmm. and, um, you know, got to get my... Uh, uh, gotta get my side quest uh, riffs done as well good good I'm gonna be doing similar I've got to finish off uh, we'll do the Grandmaster Gauntlet there's uh, will I have enough time I might want to get back into Act 7.2 if I've done my work I've got another project to do on the weekend and Monday so fingers crossed I get everything done so I'm not so stressed out but yeah, once that's done, happy days. But uh, there we go. That's been a podcast. Thanks, everybody, for listening. And uh, we'll see you next time for episode 64. Have a lovely weekend. And uh, bye-bye. <laughs>